Stop hacking us, Darren. Yeah, stop hacking stop us. Stop sticking your nose in where it doesn't belong. Yeah, yeah. Okay. He doesn't really have a nose, does he? No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, just like old movies get remade and old music gets remastered, increasingly we're seeing classic games get an HD facelift and re-released for gamers of today. And the latest in this trend is a masterpiece, Age of Empires 2. <laughs> Age of Empires is one of the pillars of the strategy genre up there with Warcraft and Total War, and it's loved for blending history with easy to approach but difficult to master gameplay. Each player starts with a few villages and a town centre. You have to gather resources as quickly and efficiently as possible in order to build an army to launch an attack on your opponent's town. And of course, other players are doing the exact same thing because that's where the strategy comes in. Age of Empires 2 is known for having that classic rock, paper, scissors formula. Generally speaking, melee infantry beat cavalry, archers beat infantry, and cavalry beats archers. With some variations here and there based on which nation you choose. Ah, Bajo, how often I'd build up my beautiful army of archers only to have them obliterated by a few cavalry. Nay! I'd quite often spend all my resources building a big defensive wall and then suddenly run out of gold and wood and not be able to build anything else. Ah, it's so intense. But let's talk about what's new in this high def remake. Yes. It's pretty much the same, isn't it? Yeah. The main difference is Steam Workshop support, which allows for a strong modding community. And they've thrown in a few high-res textures, such as new water and fire effects. But really, that's just about it. Well, almost. It has brought back a healthy online community again. There's multiplayer available, where you can go head-to-head -head against other players. And playing against a real-life opponent rather than the AI is so much better if you can get a connection. I'm glad the pre-match lobbies return. I love spamming 30 again. <laughs> the single-player campaign looks a lot better, and it's good particularly if you have an interest in history. You'll play through the stories of Attila the Hun to Joan of Arc through a series of scenarios transitioned with small storytelling sequences. I really enjoyed these story parts. They're well made and I just got caught up in them and wanted to keep playing. Tell the spawnlings what you did, Barjo. Well, I, I may have cheated to get to the next sequence. I helped program those cars, you know. Sure you did, Darren. Well, you know, a few of these scenarios actually sent me on a few wiki walks researching what I'd just played out, which is really cool. There's even an in-game history book and I think that's one of the compelling parts of the game that make it so much more than, well, just a game. So what are you going to give it, Hex? It's still a classic, isn't it? And I think for new players to Age of Empires, uh, it's a really good way to teach the, the concepts of RTS. But for veterans who've played some more recent RTS games, they're probably going to find this a little bit dated. So it's a seven rubber chickens for me. Yeah, look, I enjoyed my nostalgia trip, but it is hard to recommend this over the likes of modern RTS games like Halo Wars or Shogun 2 or even the latest Age of Empires. So I I'm going to give it six out of ten. Did you know that Halo Wars was developed by the same team who made Age of Empires? Oh, I did not know that, Darren. No. Yeah.